I think one of the major areas that this breaks down is actually relationships. With since sort of Tinder and online dating and Instagram and things like that have come around, how many people actually put serious time into their relationships when they go, oh yeah, well if this if this breaks up, I'll just download Tinder and I'll meet three new people by the end of the day. boys how are we today i want to talk about minimalism uh, but not in the way that it's normally talked about i wanted to put it in the context of how you can use minimalism to be more efficient work towards your goals work towards your purpose and basically use that sort of mentality of keeping things very very simple to stop wasting so much time and stop maybe putting in effort to things that aren't really relevant to what you're working towards talked about it on this channel before but in so many ways in so many areas we're so spoiled these days we, we have so many options to choose from whether that's uh, shopping with clothes and things like that whether that's partners whether that's uh, anything just because of the way online shopping's blown up the way everything's so get here right now everything's so immediate there's no sort of delayed gratification when it comes to food like if you're hungry you can get on Deliveroo and you've got all these takeaways if you want to buy I don't know like if you want to buy a new t-shirt you can go on ASOS and you've got all the different t-shirts ASOS do and then you've got all the different brands that are also on ASOS and all of them can be here by 10 a.m. the next day and I think a lot of the time that actually as much as it sounds brilliant I think that ends up paralyzing us and it ends up taking a lot of mental energy and a lot of time to choose between things that in the long and short aren't actually really that important i briefly mentioned it there but clothes is such a good and such an important example in sense not just in terms of buying things but obviously most these days with things like asos and fast fashion and cheap fashion loads of us have completely overflowing wardrobes which many reasons that's not great but in terms of sort of very very micro levels how much time do you waste in the morning trying to pick an outfit when you've got that much when you've got that much to, to choose from how, how many times have you put something on and it doesn't look quite right so then you've ended up changing the whole outfit or you've put most of the outfit on and the shoes don't go with it, but you like the shoes so you end up going you some people might end up spending 15 20 minutes in the morning just trying to choose what what they want to wear because they've got so many options and so much in their wardrobe and yeah over a week maybe 15 20 minutes isn't a lot of time but in if you're sort of talking about getting ready in the morning you've got your morning routine if you're someone who has to commute or catch a train or if you've got the gym or something like that sort of five minutes in the morning is precious let alone sort of 15 or 20. the reason i think of clothes is because there's a lot of examples of very successful people who have cut this out Tim Cook, um, the guy who, who founded Apple, famously always wore, uh, sorry, Steve Jobs, not Tim Cook, uh, who founded Apple, famously just wore the turtleneck. Mark Zuckerberg, who founded Facebook and Meta or whatever it's called, famously just wears his um, T-shirt with jeans. Elon Musk as well, he's very, you never really see these these guys sort of dress up. They just have a set wardrobe, so they wake up in the morning and they, they know what they throw on. They don't, they don't waste any time or any mental energy picking outfits or, or spending precious minutes on going for a wardrobe and trying to put an outfit together every morning. Another group of people who do this is actually athletes and anyone who listens to the Peter Crouch podcast will know about this, but it's something I didn't know but I find really interesting, is professional athletes because on they have to focus so hard on training. For a start, all their training gear, they all wear the exact identical gear every day and obviously that's important because it creates cohesion but it's also again they don't spend mental energy sort of oh what am i going to wear to training today they've just they come in and it's all on the side but on game days they don't own anything everything when they come into the change room is down there down to their underwear they've got a fresh kit 
fresh underwear, socks, everything, and it's completely put, so they don't even have to think in the morning about what underwear they're gonna put on. They turn up and it's just all there. And that is because managers and owners don't want their players and coaches don't want their players wasting time and mental energy having to think about um, what they're gonna wear or or have I, lo have I lost my sock, have I lost my shirt, have I got the right number on? They just want the players to come in and walk straight into the changing room with everything there so they don't have to spend any of that essential time thinking about anything else. What's brilliant about these very, they seem like small things, but over time they're not, is they're things that you and I can, can completely copy. And that's something that I've really tried to work on. I've talked to you guys quite a lot on this channel over the last year about how I've really tried to slim my wardrobe down. And over summer when I moved back from university, I was sort of taking two or three full black bin bags to charity shop every month just because I haven't grown, if you hadn't noticed. So I basically haven't thrown out any clothes since I was about 16 years old. So my wardrobe was just getting ridiculous. And I've definitely noticed that I've felt sort of better and, and just moved a bit smoother in the morning actually having a lot smaller selection of clothes to choose from one of the best things i did was i just went down to a shop and i think i bought something ridiculous like eight white t-shirts just because i don't want to have to put on a t-shirt and it gets cold and i put a jumper over the top and then the jumper doesn't match the color of the t-shirt everything goes with a white t-shirt so i've just got eight white t-shirts that i can just chuck in the wash once a week and they're, they're all ready again and it's something that I can just throw with any outfit and again I don't have to spend sort of time or mental energy thinking about these things and that's something that I definitely recommend you guys doing if you can do sort of one thing over the next weekend or the next week or whatever have a look through your wardrobe and really be ruthless and see if there's any things that you can get rid of and chuck on Depop or send to a charity shop and just really slim down the options you have to choose from in the morning. Sticking to these day-to-day -day basics, as I've said, already sort of make things easier, but it also goes for the gym as well. If you've got sort of a set gym outfit, you don't you don't want to have to sort of spend time going, oh, like, is this clean, is this dirty, I've got to wear. No, just have, if you go to the gym three times a week, just have three different t-shirts that you wear for each day, your vest that you wear to the gym, you have one pair of shorts that you chuck through the, the, the wash each week. That'll, that'll make things so much easier. On top of that, if you sort of stick with this kind of model, you're not gonna waste money buying new clothes. I think that's another thing that we, we do because when you get used to having so many options, you kind of, it makes you almost want more. So whenever you see something in the shop, you're just like, if you like it, you're like, oh, I'll, I'll just buy that and I'll wear it at some point. Whereas if you've got a very set wardrobe, you go into a shop and you're actually thinking, that's probably not gonna go with what I've got already. So I'm not gonna bother spending the money to, to, to get that and, and try and squeeze it in. I already mentioned it at the start, but this idea of having so many options and paralyzing us definitely bleeds into to other areas when it comes to when it comes to diet. If you're sat there and you're a little bit hungry, yes, you could cook, make something healthy, but why would you do that when you can just have two taps on your phone and a guy will be here on a motorbike with whatever shop you could think of in the world with with a burger or a pizza or, or, or something like that. And even then, how much time do you spend scrolling through the Deliveroo app or Uber Eats app, looking for something when in the, by the time that you scroll through the app and it's taken to deliver it, you actually probably could have just cooked something that was far cheaper and healthier. Netflix, again, you've got all these films and everything like that, it's brilliant, but you probably spend the whole length of a film scrolling through Netflix deciding what you want to watch. I think one of the major areas that this breaks down is actually relationships. With Since sort of Tinder and online dating and Instagram and things like that have come around, how many people actually put serious time into their relationships when they go, oh yeah, well, if this if this breaks up, I'll just download Tinder and I'll meet three new people by the end of the day. That, that was a statistic that back in the day, the average person lived less than a mile or grew up less than a mile from the person they married. And that that's when those relationships were a lot more successful. Whereas now it's like, if anything goes wrong, you can just chuck it out and get a new one because you'll be able to meet someone so easily. I don't want to go around in circles i think i've made the point so i'll leave it there something you want to try have a clean out your wardrobe like i said earlier and maybe set yourself a task no new clothes for three months or something like that or six months if you think you can if you think you can do it and just stick to that and just see if you feel a little bit better see if with your bedroom decluttered with your not so many options just see if your head feels a little bit a little bit less fuzzy and a little bit more main uh, streamlined i guess that's probably the best way i put it 
Thank you for making it all the way to the end. I do appreciate you guys who stick around. Um, if you did find anything useful, please do consider subscribing. Don't forget to like the video. Um, I do drop two new videos every week. As always, comment any other advice you have below, and I will see you in the next one. Till then, take care, lads.